Hello and welcome to the second section of Volume 2, Building and Optimising the Desktop Operating System. In this section, we are going to build a Windows 10 Virtual Desktop Machine. So what are you going to learn in this first video? We are going to start by creating a Windows 10 Virtual Desktop in vCenter. Once created, we will then install the Windows 10 Operating System and optimise it. The final part is to prepare the Virtual Desktop Machine for delivery to the end users. So let's get started and start to build the Virtual Desktop. To build the desktop, there are several steps we need to complete. First of all, you need to create the virtual desktop machine in vCenter. Once the virtual machine has been created, you need to configure the virtual hardware to reflect the fact that the desktop is running as a virtual machine. This includes tasks such as configuring the virtual machine BIOS. Once these steps have com been completed, then we can move ahead and install the Windows 10 operating system and finally VMware tools. There are a number of different ways to build a desktop operating system, as we discussed previously when we built the Windows 7 Virtual Desktop Machine, but let's just have a quick reminder of what those are. If you take a physical desktop environment, there are a number of ways in which the operating system can be built and deployed. For example, you could use the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, MDT, or maybe the Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager, SCCM. Both of these options can be used, along with all the other tools available to build a desktop image including VMware's own Mirage product. So we just talked about a couple of options that you can use to build your desktop images, but let's just highlight the one that you should not use, and that's a physical to virtual tool, or P2V, which turns your physical image into a virtual image. Best practice is to build a new virtual desktop image from scratch, so it starts off life as being designed to be a virtual machine from day one. After all, you would potentially build a new image for a new hardware platform, and that's what you're doing in building a VDI desktop. There are a few reasons for not using your physical image to create your virtual desktop image. One of the reasons is the size of the image, which more than likely will have become bloated with numerous patches and updates being applied over the years. You want your VDI image to be lean and fresh, with just the most recent and relevant software installed. Another reason is that there might be some hardware drivers or other hardware-based software elements within the image, such as a desktop hardware management solution, such as Intel Active Management Technology, or AMT that relies on firmware and other components that are built into the chipset of the physical machine. As you are now using a virtual desktop machine, this type of hardware is not present, and therefore you do not require it to be installed. Before we get on with the build process, we need to look at the specifications of the virtual desktop machine from a virtual hardware perspective, and what we need to configure it. For our example lab virtual desktop machine, we are going to configure it with two virtual CPUs. A single CPU may be sufficient for lighter work, this is where your assessment data becomes key. The network card should be configured to use the VMware VMX Net3 network driver. We're going to configure the machine with 4 gigs of memory as we're installing a 64-bit operating system. We're going to set the SCSI controller to LSI Logic SAS and leave the hard disk size as the default size. There is no need to configure the graphics card, as any settings configured here will be overridden by the desktop pool settings later. The optical drive should be set to Client Device, so that you are able to mount ISO images to the virtual desktop machines. The diskette drive should also be set to Disabled in the virtual machine BIOS, as should the parallel and serial ports. Another important factor when configuring the size of the hardware is not to fall into the trap of oversizing your virtual desktop machines. For example, if you only need one virtual CPU, then only give it one virtual CPU. As previously mentioned, this is why sometimes your desktop data is critical. So now we're going to create our second virtual desktop image, and this time we're going to build a Windows 10 image. So we've already logged into the vSphere web client, as we did before, and we have our folder that says Windows Images. So what we're going to do is in that folder, click, right click to select new virtual machine and now we see the new virtual machine and select a creation type dialog box so as this is a new virtual machine ensure that we create, click create a new virtual machine and click the next button next we need to give the virtual machine a name so we're going to call this windows 10 gold image click the next button and then select a compute resource to host the virtual desktop, in this case our ESX server, and click the next button. Next we need to select our storage to host the virtual machine, so we're going to click on our local data store and click next. And then we need to select our compatibility. 
This means which version of ESX you're running. So in the example lab we're running ESX 6, but if you're running a different version then select that version from the drop down menu. And then click next when you're done. Next we need to select the guest OS. So as this is a Windows box, make sure that we've got guest OS family as Windows. And then from the OS version, from the drop down menu, select Windows 10 64 bit, and then click the next button. So now we have the customized hardware window, where we can change the hardware configuration of the virtual desktop. As we saw when we looked at the configuration, there's a couple of changes we need to make here. First of all, as a Windows 10 box, we should really give it two virtual CPUs. We'll leave the memory at 2 gig currently, but 4 is probably recommended. And we'll leave the hard disk size at 32 gig and the SCSI controller at the default LSI logic. The next thing we need to do is expand the new network option. And then scroll down to where it says adapter type. It currently says E1000E. And then from the drop down box, select VMXNet3. And make sure that the box is checked to connect at power on. The next thing we need to do is from the new CD DVD drive, we need to attach the ISO image that contains the Windows 10 installation media. So from the drop down box, change client device to data store ISO file. Now from the data store browser, if you scroll down on our local data store to ISO images, and then from the contents window, choose the Windows 10 enterprise ISO image, and then click OK. One thing we need to remember to do here is click the connect at power on so that when the machine boots, the ISO file gets automatically attached. So we'll leave the rest as default settings for now. But the next thing we need to configure is the VM options. So if you click the button for VM options and then scroll down to where it says boot options, expand the boot options and then click the box that says force BIOS setup. This means that the next time the machine boots, it will boot into the BIOS setup screen, where we can make some other changes that are necessary for a VDI that virtual desktop. When you're happy with those settings, click the next button, and you'll finally see the ready to complete window. Check all the settings, match what you need them to, and the configuration is as expected, and then once you're happy with that, click the finish button. As we can see at the bottom now, that virtual machine is being created, and that's now complete. So now we can go to our Windows 10 Gold image, and we can power it on. So as that power on has completed, we can now go back, right click, and we can open a console to that desktop. And there we can see that it's automatically booted straight into the BIOS screen. So now we need to make a few changes here. So using the cursor keys, toggle down to legacy diskette A, and press the return key, and then using the up arrow cursor key, hit disabled and press return. Next, we need to make some changes on the Advanced tab. So if we hit the right cursor to Advanced, then cursor down to I.O. Device Configuration and press Return. First of all, Serial Port A, if we press Return on that, and then using the up arrow, move to Disabled and then press Return to select that. And do exactly the same for all the other options for Serial Port A, Parallel Port, and finally Floppy Disk Controller. Once you've disabled all of those, press the escape key to return to the main screen, and then using the right arrow key, scroll across to exit. Highlight exit saving changes and press return. And then press return to select yes to confirm the setup changes and exit. You'll now see that the Windows 10 machine starts to boot from the installation media. This will now start the setup installation program where we can install and configure our Windows 10 operating system. As this is going to take some time, we're not going to go through the whole installation process and we'll pick it up once the installation has completed. So now we've completed the installation of Windows 10 for our gold image. If we look now at our vSphere web client, we can see that's powered up and it's up and running. The last thing we need to do as part of the installation is install VMware tools. So from the vSphere web client screen here, if we click on install VMware tools, then we'll see the VMware tools installation box to mount the ISO image. So we click mount. And then if we then switch back to our Windows 10 machine, we have to see that the VMware tools DVD has uh, just appeared. And 
and from here we can run our setup of VMware tools. So we click yes to start the installation. You can see the installer now is launching. So here we see the installation wizard for VMware tools. So we click the next button to continue. We're going to do a typical installation on this box. So we're going to click the next button to continue. And then finally click install to start the installation. We can see copying of new files and services starting as the installation progresses. As part of the VMware Tools installation, it installs the latest network driver for the VMX Net 3. This will now connect it to the network, so now you'll probably see a box pop up saying do you want to allow your PC to be seen by others on the network. You probably also saw there that the screen resolution changed as it also installed the VMware video drivers. So now that's completed the VMware Tools setup, the next thing we need to do is just click the finish button, and that's going to prompt us to reboot our machine. So we're going to click on there to reboot, but that completes the installation of our Windows 10 VDI desktop.